Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Fear the Queer. A show that talks about everything on our queer agendas. I am Kyle. And I'm Josh. And I, I mean, you're Kyle, but you should have been like, bonjour, I am Kyle. Bonjour, oui, oui. I was feeling very, like, French, so I'm wearing, uh, like, a little beret and um, a, a turtleneck um, that's striped, so I'm, like, I'm, like, slutty French mime. Yeah, I'm feeling it today. Oui, oui, baguette. It's I was going to say, it's giving faggot, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, we yeah. be, we be, we Well, this is a... Sh- oh. Oh, okay. That's the red light district version. <laughs> <laughs> well, on today's episode, we are going to be talking all about um, something that we love to talk about, which are pop divas. But for this particular category, um, sorry, brain aneurysm happening yeah, here. Like a brain um, fart. Yeah, yeah. Um, right. For this category, we're going to be doing underrated divas. Ones that were like, oh yeah, they are good. Why aren't we talking about them more? The reason why is because over the weekend, Janet Jackson released her four-part documentary series. So I'm wearing my Janet, what have you done for me lately sweater. Um, and this is all in honor of divas who just haven't really gotten the recognition that they have deserved over the years now granted these are also our hot takes so who knows there might be some people who are like that bitch is trash but you'll I'm sure you'll let us all know on social media here but before we get started Kyle do you have your Trenta iced Starbucks Star- Starbucks will you Starbucks well today I have my yes I have my Trenta Starbies um and you know what is it a French roast? A fr- ah! <laughs> Ma'am. Ma'am. Okay, I have to take a drink of water because that was good. Huh. Thank you. Mm. Surprised me. Um, uh, I, I will say I, I had my mental health because today's my day off. And I had my little mental health walk today. I was feeling myself. I wasn't dressed like a mime. Um, now that That's I'm my gig. Yeah, that's your your kink? <laughs> my kink. <laughs> well, that 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 is why we can't be seen together because you'd just be jumping my bones and I'd be like uh... trapped in the box. Um <laughs> but I went to Starbucks and um I always get two Splendas in my Trenta Starbies, no classic syrup, right? Mm-hmm. Um and today they must have hit the wrong button because they gave me six Splendas. Oh damn. Sweet. And it is it is very splendid y. Mm. I wouldn't say it's splendid, but it is something because it did did my coffee. So um, here's to that. Being- well, cheers, queers. Clean so what tea. are you drinking? Oh, <laughs> my water that features a Delvice sticker on it. Well, you know, you know. And Mariah oh. Carey. Well, talk about two underrated divas, Delvice and Mariah Carey. No hey. one talks about them. No one talks about them. <laughs> Absolutely not. Cheers, Cheers queers. queers. Clink, clink. We are going to another segment of Can You Keep Up? And when we talk about all the hot gossip that has happened this past week here, Kyle, I think you have a pretty hot topic yourself that's happening right now. Oh my God. Okay, so um, I would never categorize myself as... And she just orgasmed. That is how I orgasm. Yes, mm-hmm. I, I just go... It's very much like Ave Maria. Um, I'm available for bookings, baptism, funerals, birthdays. Um, Our so if you've been living under a rock or if you are not a um, gamer, I-, I would never consider myself a gamer, but I will say I do have a Switch and I did buy a game. So I guess that does make me a gamer. <laughs> And I bought by definition alone. By definition, I bought the new Pokemon Arceus. Bitch, let me tell you. <laughs> if you like Pokemon, if you like games, if you have $65 to spend, spend it on this. It is okay. so fun. Like I again, I do not consider myself a, a gamer. Maybe I am. Maybe I've turned a new leaf 
Maybe I was gonna say, I'm like a Pokemon. I don't know. Well, like, what's your definition of a gamer? Someone who games a lot and is gay. Okay, so then you're a gamer. I don't really game a lot, though. I literally I went like... over to your house last time, and you were playing like that Pokemon, like Smash Bros. Oh, type no, that was game. Pokemon Unite. That's just that's not a, that's not okay. That's, that's not like a hmm. like a game game. Okay, like, like, I think of like gamers like who who have like Twitch streams and stuff like that. Oh, and they have like the like designated like computer yeah, chair like, that like has the back or whatever. Yeah. I'm like that's that's their thing. But I I mean and bless them. But let me tell you, my review <laughs> as someone who does not get very fun. It is a perfect like role playing game. It's great. Like the battles are a lot of fun. If you it feels very nostalgic to me. It was the first one I had ever bought. Um. A Pokemon game that I've ever bought and it was the first one that I had besides like the free Pokemon Unite which I, is like done to me I don't care anymore um <laughs> and Fuck that it's it's done it, it 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 served its purpose for a few months and it's done um but ever since like Pokemon Red for the Game Boy mm-hmm. Color when I got that like in 1999 mm. the first um, one <laughs> yeah 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 it it um it's very nostalgic and I thought like oh my god I don't know any of these Pokemon I don't know their names it's not gonna be fun no it's so much fun you can like run all over the map you get like this like um I forget what it's called but it's like a deer that you ride oh so you like gallop it's fulfilling my horse girl fantasies so you you gallop across the plane is it a ponyta no but I got one of those that was like the second one I got and then I just caught a rapidash today see you have your horse girl family i'm living my horse girl family and let me tell you and you can you can make your little character so i made adele vice because adele vice is clearly a gamer i guess i guess Um, so so she has cute little blonde hair and cute little outfit um that i paid so is it still is it still like gotta catch them all type of realness so with this one it takes place in a different region where it's like back in time like you fall through like a portal and then you as one does we all fall in portals sometimes it happens mm-hmm. um but you have to basically yes you have to catch them all but it's to fulfill a pokedex because they don't have like the pokedex it's like before any of the other stories have have started it's just real fun so you make the pokedex is it like do you chisel it on a rock and then you'd like just put it like engraved somewhere like this is what a rapid dash was no no <laughs> and that'd be okay. fun no no, no, no. It, it's it's very fun like you you run around and you can like catch the wild pokemon and unlike like the earlier games because the earlier games you had to like battle a lot and obviously it's like on a little thing and it's like boop, 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 boop. Mm-hmm. this one you can literally run everywhere you can climb mountains you can go across streams you can um they have things that where you have to like find like other player satchels so like a play if a player like dies their satchel will drop and then you can go find their satchel and then you can get points and those points can be turned in for different stones you can evolve your evs but i also will say it's been a lot um you you get pokemon quicker like you don't have to be like oh my god i'm never going to be able to capture this Mm mm-hmm and there's a lot of like, there's like the main mission and a lot of side quests. So you're like never bored. And half the time, I'm not even doing this. I started a mission and I thought it was too hard. So I've just been running around getting Pokemon. Hey, well, I'm happy that you're happy. And it's very fun. Yeah, I was gonna say, I'm glad that you are enjoying it because maybe I'll get it someday. Who knows? I like Pokemon you, casually. You, you should You should get it now. Because then <laughs> now, okay, bye. You can be part of the conversation. You know, there's nothing worse than not being part of the conversation. Right? I mean, right? are I mean, are that many people talking about Pokemon? I can find like 10 people on my Twitter, like Chicago drag community that are they posted. Oh, well, okay. Well, good. Anyway. Um, speaking of other news of being in the conversation here. <laughs> Rihanna, okay, anyway. uh, yeah, anyway, Rihanna announced today that she is pregnant with her first child with ASAP Rocky. And 
Have you seen the photos, like the pregnancy announcement photos of her just walking through New York? Yeah, just like really casually. Okay, I can I ask? I thought, I thought that she already was pregnant. Like they had already announced this, right? Uh, no, this is the, no, today was the first day that she announced it. There have been no rumors or anything? I mean, there's always been rumors. Like there have been rumors since like, you know, her and Drake were hooking up yeah, that no, she was I pregnant. Mean, like, specifically with ASAP Rocky, like I thought. Yeah, maybe... there's been rumors, but this is like the actual announcement. Okay. Yeah. G- exciting for her. Yeah. I was going to say, um, I love all the memes that are just like, she's going to drop the baby before she drops the album. So I'm just like, eh. Oh my God. You meant drop the baby as in like have the baby. I was like, yep, drop it on its head. Well, yeah, no. Uh, well, who knows actually. She's Rihanna. She's not going to be able, to, she's not going to carry the baby. Right. Her, the baby in it, her stomach. ASAP right Rocky now. is going to be the mom. Like, have you seen that photo of ASAP Rocky holding the little girl? And like, no. <laughs> their hair is like super long and flowy like so it makes them look like a mom holding their child that's gonna be yeah that's gonna be him and it's gonna be a fucking beautiful baby i well i feel like neither of them are going to carry that baby like it it will have 50 nannies um and rihanna will continue to do fenty and asap rocky will rap (laughs) yes model (laughs) has, has he put out any music lately not not that I know of. I mean, nothing that I've like listened to, but I've also stopped listening to a lot of things that are trendy right now. Um, oh, so hipster. Right. Very well, Tumblr uh, of you. Uh, just more of like, yeah, <laughs> more Tumblr of me. Um, no, but I also think too, like Rihanna's going to do, now do like Fenty like diaper lines and like Fenty <laughs> like baby makeup. Like. <laughs> Fenty pacifiers. Yeah, yeah. that would be kind of chic. That would be fenty. What do you think her baby's name is going to be? I mean, it it would. I don't know. Fanta. (laughs) Fanta Fenty. Yeah, I I don't know actually. (laughs) Ask because whatever the baby's name is, I guarantee you, she'll she'll have like a baby line. Mark my words and give me ten percent, Rihanna. That'll be like uh, that'll be like a million dollars. Oh yeah, alone exactly. I was going to say, like, with the, also this baby coming into the world with Rihanna as your mama, mm, lucky baby. Very lucky. It's too bad we're only going to be on this planet for four more years and then the, it will just burst into flames. But yes, yes, I agree. That is true. But um, if that were to happen, <laughs> <laughs> stream don't look up. Oh, I haven't watched that yet. Oh, you haven't? I actually liked it. Did I mean, like it? yeah, it was... um. I mean, the message like definitely like hits you over the head and it's like an echo chamber of like the audience who would watch it, but it's very funny. I like it. Yeah. I think that's like why I haven't watched it is because I was like, I I know what I'd be getting into. I've been binging a lot of stuff on HBO. I just, I finally, you told me to watch uh, White Lotus. Mm -hmm. I almost, I almost was like, you told me. So good. Um, I really (laughs) liked it, but I, I gotta say, I mean, I... The ending was a little anticlimactic for me. Yes, because the horrible people horrible people won in the end. Right. So yeah. yeah. But I mean that's kind of like I don't know. I feel like that's kind of the purpose of the, the white lotus in general. Like it's just like yeah. all the gross people are just going to continue to be gross and get away with a lot of things in life. So I just I I hate that guy. Like what is that actor's name? um i don't he know he looks like an accountant no, he does look no, like an accountant. no shade to accountants i just like he looks he looks like someone who <laughs> he bothers me i know like he looks like those like college douche bros that continue to like be college douche bros in their like adulthood yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um uh, speaking of douche bros um have you also heard about how a lot of artists have been pulling their music off of Spotify because of the Joe Rogan experience? Yes, I heard that Neil Young, um, who is very old, and Joni Mitchell Mm -hmm. both pulled their their music off. And like, I don't really listen to Neil Young, but Joni Mitchell I do listen to. Mm -hmm. And I guess we are going to be both see both sides now. That's a song that she did. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, no, it's interesting because <laughs> it's interesting. Like, it's funny because when Adele dropped 30, immediately Spotify like changed the algorithm of how you listen to music just because her impact was so big. But when artists start to drop their music because of Joe Rogan and all they did was basically Spotify did announce that they are going to be adding like a tag before the episode or like a little audio clip that says like, this might contain sensitive information about COVID-19 and blah, blah, blah. It's just like, sis, that's all you got. That's like Joe Biden giving us four free COVID home tests. Like it's just such a weak, thanks. (laughs) Weak sauce. You know, it's just weak sauce. Like you're, you're really going to be like, Oh, well, by the way, this does contain COVID-19 information. Just we're going to get flagged for that. Um, mm-hmm. But like it's it's not contained COVID-19 information as much as it's containing misinformation. Right. It's containing lies. And so it's like, so, yeah. I mean, it's. Can I say something um, that like maybe controversial? Sure. Okay, so be, I'm going to play devil's advocate here, okay? So I can understand why people could argue that not allowing him to say what he wants to say, even though it is 100 million percent wrong, is somehow taking away like freedom of speech. And that being said, Spotify has every right to bar him from saying what he wants because it's a private company. Mm-hmm. I don't understand, but I can, like, I can understand people being like, he can say whatever he wants. Like you could say like, yeah, he's going to say whatever he wants. It's all lies. We have a lot of people that believe that, mm-hmm. you know, um, I think Spotify should just kick his ass off. It's not, there's so many platforms nowadays that um, like, <laughs> God, sorry, I said the brain part. I said ADHD. I said there's so many platforms nowadays, and in my head I was like, it's like the '70s. Um, but yeah. there's so many like streaming platforms that I'm, I'm like, what? Why doesn't he just like go on? I don't know something else or like. Well, you don't have to have Spotify to like have a podcast. Like you could literally just upload audio right. files to like your own website, and people would just listen to it that way. Right. You know. So it's. It, it, I he, think for me. Well, do you think he actually follow or follow him? Apparently enough for him to get like a multi-million dollar contract with Spotify. That's the thing for me. Like if, you know, if they keep him on Spotify and demonetize his contract and things like that, I think that's fair because, you know, Spotify can be like, well, you know, you sh- you're not going to get money out of us by spreading misinformation. Mm-hmm. Personally, I don't think taking him off of Spotify is really going to help he already has like a huge audience as it is and they're gonna flock to him no matter what like if he leaves spotify to create his own website or to create his own like podcast app they're going to listen to it so i think for me spotify should just you know take the money out of it because money is power and the less power you give him in terms of contracts and stuff like that he probably will eventually leave on his own because there's probably going to be some streaming platform out there that is going to give him money yeah. to come onto their thing, you know, whatever yeah. that may be. That's yeah, my opinion. I, I I can understand that. I, I, yeah, definitely taking the money out. But that also, I mean, I guess he has a big following, but whose following is bigger? Joni Mitchell and Neil Young's versus, I don't know. You know, like, it's like, if, if people really were like, like if multiple musicians were like, I'm taking my music off. Like imagine right. if like Beyonce or Ariana Grande. Were All like, Taylor Swift has to do is just say one passive aggressive tweet and then Spotify would be like, we're so sorry. And like, right. So it's, it's like, imagine if they also were like, I mean, yeah. Like if they were like, you know what? We're taking our music off too. Spotify would listen because they would be like, oh yeah. Like we make way more money off of those people than mm-hmm. we do some insane person. Mm -hmm. but that being said taylor swift actually did do that once and no one followed her because she was fighting for artists getting like the amount of money that they get per stream like it needs to be like equal across Mm -hmm. the board or whatever and she pulled her music off of spotify no one else did it like she kind of was like her own little lone wolf walking off well that's and that's the thing it's it's like if people aren't united in the front no matter Mm -hmm. what the movement is things don't get done 
Mm-hmm. So whether it's pulling your music off Spotify, fighting for civil rights, starting unions in your job, whatever it might be, if you have like one person doing it, it's not going to get done. No. So I guess we'll just wait and see. Yeah. See what happens. I was going to say, I know this sounds kind of stupid of me, but like, and maybe it's just because I live in my own little bubble, but I don't think I even knew who Joe Rogan was. Like, I didn't connect the fact that he was Fear Factor guy until like, and then this crazy podcast guy until last year. So no, I, I, I don't think that's stupid. I mean, I don't, I, I, I don't think that like we are the uh, audience. We're not the target audience. We're not the target audience <laughs> for um, what is it? The Joe Rogan Experience, right? Is that what it's called. I, I see. I don't. I don't even know. Um, but then when I was like, oh, he's a Fear Factor guy. The trials right. and tribulations of the Joe Rogan Experience. I'm just like, I guess if you are loud enough you can be like if you're loud enough you can be loud and wrong and people will still listen because you're still loud um that's why just look at you (laughs) (laughs) ma'am loud and wrong if if being wrong wait if being wrong is right wait no if being wrong this is what wrong is is then yeah if if this is what wrong is i don't want to be right thank you yeah (laughs) If this is what wrong is, I don't want to be right. And now to get to the heart of our queer agenda, we are going to be talking about our favorite subject, pop divas. But this time we're going to switch the tables around here. Last time we talked all about the icons, the legends, the goddesses, if you would say. Now we're going to be highlighting three of our favorite underrated goddesses. I mean, underrated in our opinion. Underrated goddesses, Aphrodite, Athena. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, is Ophelia? No, that was Hamlet. Never mind. Um, I, I still say Cassiopeia. <laughs> Cassiopeia, isn't that, isn't that the... She's the Greek goddess. Like when you like make a sound, it's like squish. And it's like, what? That's, is that that's cat- onomatopoeia. I was Not like, that's onoma. Yeah. Onomatopoeia. <laughs> Underrated Greek goddess onomatopoeia. <laughs> oh my God. Sorry. Anamanopia. What did you call her? What is her Cassiopeia. name? <laughs> Cassiopeia. 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 All right. Anyway, so not. <laughs> Whenever she walks, she actually makes a sound. Cassiopeia. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yes, we're not talking about our favorite goddess. <laughs> we're, t- no. we're talking about underrated divas, musical mm-hmm. divas, mm-hmm. Uh, and. I, I would agree with you. Some people might go, they're not really that underrated. And I would say, you're probably right. Um, because I had one that I felt was underrated, but then I didn't think she wasn't that poppy. Mm. I feel like we, I think that pop is like a major... Is it, is it pop right? or is it just the fact that they're female divas? See, we'll, we'll get into it. We'll get into it here. All right. I... I- I thought you said pop divas. I say lots of things here. You said onomatopoeia was a Greek goddess here. <laughs> you, you did too. You did. You said what was her name? Cornucopia. You did yeah. too. It's <laughs> Capricornia. <laughs> Capricorn. Ca- Capricorn. Yeah. Anyways. All right. Alicia. Yeah. Uh, Kyle, who is your first underrated diva that most people should be talking about more? So this diva has been around since the early 2010s. Uh, and- <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. What did I like? A long, long time. <laughs> that was 10 years ago. I know. It's just funny because I thought you were going to be like 80s, 90s, early 2012. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, she was born in the 80s, but um, <laughs> she wasn't making music in the womb. Uh, mm. Like Rihanna's baby might be. But- That's true. You may know her um, from her previous name, Marina and the Diamonds, but it is Marina now. And um, I just really love Marina. Did she lose the diamonds? She lost the diamonds in the divorce. Um, Mm -hmm. No, I don't know why she dropped the diamonds. She dropped the D, dropped the diamonds. 
Um, and now she just goes by Marina. Um, I mean, Maybe she I'm couldn't a, afford him anymore. Afford, who can? I'm a rhinestone girl. It's hard to be yeah. a diamond in the rhinestone world, Dolly Parton. Uh, but Mar- Marina is like one of those artists where also all of my um, musicians on my list are all from the UK. Interesting. So I, I was like thinking, I was like, just wait, I'm going to be like, they're really underrated. And then like someone from like Wales is going to be like, no, they're huge. Like you're stupid. And I'm going to say, right. um, but I just feel like no one is really talking about her right now. She had her huge album of Electra Heart back in like, what was it? 2013, mm-hmm. um, you know, all those years ago. And I would say that album is near to perfection. It is so good. I listen to it all the time. Um, you did three drag numbers like, to that album in front of me in my living room many times. I, I did. I forgot about that. And I still have them in my repertoire. Um, and I feel like she, you know, and what was it, 2015 or something? She had the album Fruit. Mm-hmm. And it was okay. And ever since she dropped the diamonds, she's kind of dropped off herself. I feel like she's kind of going through like this like whole rebranding. Um, because she just had an album, and I think it was 2020, 2021. And let me double check that because she had this album and it's that good. no one listened to. Yes. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of a bummer. It's um, let's see. Yeah, t- 2021, she has the album Ancient Dreams in a Modern Land. And no one really listened to it. Like it it's it it's it reminds me of like stuff that she had been uh, making because she's always like this kind of bubblegum pop with an mm-hmm. edge, which I love. And so it's similar to that, but I mean, she's like more grown up now. Anyways, that being said, um, yeah, I just feel like more people, like she's still current, but they just aren't talking about, like maybe like the market is just so oversaturated with like pop divas right now that like it's hard to kind of break through and push past like, Ariana, Dua Lipa. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like well, like, plus, if you take a while, like, if you take a break and, like, during that break, like, other people start making stuff and you're, like, left in dust, ooh, girl, like, I know, but she's, like, really good. Like, there's really good music there. And I think that it's, like, pop music, but with, like, heart to it. Mm-hmm. Um, she has so, a great persona. Oh, yeah. Like, and, like, I love any like I'm such a sucker for musicians where every album they have have, like a different persona that they kind of put on um so like like different looks like Gaga obviously is the main one that probably comes to mind but like Madonna does it too um I feel like Madonna did it first (laughs) Madonna I I'm not coming for Madonna's gig speaking of an underrated diva Madonna no um (laughs) someone we don't know Madonna um Madonna I, I love Madonna Madonna, I, I don't know her. No, um, I love Madonna, but I, uh, I, I, I just think that people should be talking about Marina more. But maybe it's because she dropped the diamonds. Anyways, love Marina. Um, if you had to choose a song that was your favorite Marina song, what would it be? Pre Madonna Girl. Mm. It is classic Marina. Um, but I do have like three songs. Should oh, I? Oh, you have three. Cool? So Prima Donna Girl is like my favorite. And then mm-hmm. Blue, which is from the song or the album Fruit. It's very good. And then this one is from- um, Like Skip to My Lou. What? Skip Did you say Lou? Lou? Oh, Blue. Like oh, Blue. blue. <laughs> yeah, I heard that. it's, it's um... <laughs> Skip to My Lou. I was gonna say, like Lou? Marina the Diamonds says, "Skip to my Lou, my darling." <laughs> do you do you know Lou? Do you? Do you no, you do. <laughs> oh, you do know Lou. <laughs> Name of the episode? Do you know Lou? Do you um, know? <laughs> do you know Lou? Um, Blue, which is very good, and then a song from her most recent album, which is called "I Love You, But I Love Me More." It's very, um, you know, Leo energy. Marina is like the type of singer who I feel like she's a good starter for the night of before you go out, if that makes sense. 
I was gonna say, especially the first album, because I remember like that being on a couple of playlists of mine before I went out. But I don't know, maybe I have a different going out playlist than other people. I listen to church home hymns. Mm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it gets me in the mood. Nineties infomercials. Pro- yeah, prophetize to people. Say, mm. um, uh, be healed. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. So, what's but- your first uh, underrated? diva i was gonna say pop diva but i guess it's just the underrated divas yeah underrated divas i mean most of them are pop let's be real here but my first underrated diva has been around since 1997 um she's constantly compared to another famous singer and um she actually is one of the only four female artists who have had two songs spend at least 10 weeks at number one on the hot 100 charts here it is Miss Kelly Rowland. Miss Kelly Rowland, famously, American everyone's, Idol. yeah, famously from, <laughs> oh, <gasps> Kelly Clarkson. Oh, she's fine. She's not underrated. Um, yeah, show. yeah Kelly was, Rowland, she's hard up. So tell us what's going on with yeah, her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Poor Kelly Rowland is still Poor stuck Kelly under Rowland. the Superdome from 2013. Beyonce, like, just shoved her back into that little, not like. the Superdome. Oh, my yeah. <laughs> um no Kelly Rowland's always been great like and she's always had a very pretty cute voice um obviously like you know she's gonna constantly be compared to Beyonce so unfortunately that just kind of comes with the territory here and if anything I'd be like hey like I'm always gonna be associated with Beyonce for the rest of my life here that ain't bad you know um it's not no and like she's had like a lot of good songs um we were talking about this commander the one with her and david guetta guetta guida guido i don't know guida onomatopoeia <laughs> yeah david onomatopoeia and kelly Guida's Rowland released a song yeah, yeah called um commander and then do you remember the year after that where they did love when love takes over like i want you, do you to remember that song when love takes over yeah no. Um, maybe anyway, if I, maybe if I heard it, maybe if you heard it from a more experienced singer. Anyway, um, my dilemma rated diva is Josh. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please support me. Um, dilemma with Nelly, where she famously was texting "Where you at, boo?" on Microsoft Excel. Um, Amazing. For- First of all, I just have to ask, where did, how, what phone features Microsoft Excel on? I would love to have Microsoft Excel on my iPhone. <laughs> Those like little like phones. Yeah. Why do you could get Microsoft Excel on, on an iPhone, can't you? I would, I mean. Or maybe it's a Google phone. Because is maybe. it Google with Microsoft? Uh, mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Kelly Rowland, Tech She had Diva. a Google phone. We love that. Tech Diva. All and- the way back in 2002. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Um, she did the song Motivation with Lil Wayne, which is such a sexy... Okay, do that song. <sighs> Baby, I'ma be your motivation. You can't stop it. <laughs> oh, you know, Music's I think I... Music's playing in the background. And you, know you know what's crazy? <laughs> when you went in the background i was like oh wait yeah i think i know what you're saying i think i know that one (laughs) yeah and then well last time i saw kelly Rowland was when she was featured in beyonce's homecoming when she made a surprise appearance in that um but i don't know she's always been great and was it a surprise that kelly showed up because i feel like kelly and beyonce are close they're like sisters it'd be a surprise if michelle showed up i know they literally treat michelle like the third one (laughs) he is (laughs) <laughs> she is i know like like i'm sorry michelle you're you know what when jesus say yes beyonce can say no and <laughs> <laughs> yes um yeah i mean at least with kelly like she gets beyonce's approval on a lot of things poor michelle she has to fight for her life just to be like mentioned <laughs> i mean Hashtag, we'll bring back hashtag poor Michelle. <laughs> Did it ever go away? I feel like Michelle is always kind of like the, the other, the other sister. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, the other She's like, now. 
<laughs> she's like um when snl parodied the andrew sisters and kristen wig was like the one with like the little hands like that's michelle williams she's the equivalent of yes. that in destiny's child yeah yeah she's she's something but you know what kelly yeah i i think kelly is great she seems really nice mm-hmm. like where again we're always going to just end up comparing her to beyonce but where beyonce feels a little untouchable i feel like kelly is like i don't know she seems like more approachable mm-hmm. she seems like more down to earth um i don't know if you've seen this but i because i've been on twitter a lot but some there was this image going around of donna summer and i love donna summer but it was the donna summer kelly Rowland comparison side by side of how similar they look and people mm-hmm. were like, okay, where's the, when there is a biopic, Kelly has to be the top choice. And I was like, I, I, I don't disagree. I think that would be a great idea. How cool would that be? And Can Kelly she Rowland, um, I mean, she was in Freddy versus Jason and she called Freddy Krueger a faggot. <laughs> Tell me something. What kind of faggot runs around in a Christmas sweater? Well, can, can you, well, well, she she yeah. could say faggot. <laughs> okay, but also Freddy Krueger, he's a little fruity. He is. She no, she got yes. it right. Yeah. Yes. Um. Yeah. yeah. No, she gets a pass. Um. Yeah. But, but um. Yeah. I mean, like, I bet. I feel like Kelly can act because she acts like she's okay with Beyonce being in the spotlight and not her all these years. So I, you know what? Hey. Can... Oh, also, um, <laughs> she she also last year did a cover of CeCe Peniston's Finally. And it's Kelly oh, Rowland's voice of Finally. It's such a fucking bop. It's, it's good. so good. It's so it's good. good. Like, I have to say, like, I am a Kelly Rowland, like, fanatic here. I love her music. I think she's great. I actually was going to include Solange on this list here, but then Solange kind of got big out of nowhere. Um, it's like, it, it, you know, it's funny. It, it totally, I feel like everyone on, on these lists Mm -hmm. It depends on the circle that you're talking to. Because if you're talking to like certain people, they'd be like, Kelly is around, Marina's around. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. But I feel like the mass public, like like top 40, because we're not, I'm not hearing any of their, I don't think any of these songs or any of these musicians I've chosen have songs that are currently on top 40. No. You know what I mean? They're no. all working. Well, right. one of them, I'm not sure. But <laughs> we'll call her. We'll ask her. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, who is your second choice, if I don't mind asking? So my second choice is someone who um, I've always really enjoyed. Um, again, I some complete side note. Um, all of these musicians are from like around 2013 when I discovered them, when they like came out. And I don't know why, but I guess like 2013 was like a big year for me. I love 2013. It was a moment for me. I don't know what mm-hmm. it was. I was like seven years old. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was like, I, I would, I honestly, I would not give anything to go back and be 23 again. Like that sucked. But like the music was kind of stellar. So this musician is another musician from the UK. Hello, babes. Um, she famously dated Robert Pattinson and kind of edged him up quite a bit. Um, Kristen Stewart is a songstress? Kristen Stewart, a.k.a. FKA Twigs. Mm, mm-hmm. So FKA Twigs, um, I've always really enjoyed her. And I, she's definitely more on like the artsy end of things, the artsy end of music, um, <laughs> the artsy end of pop if you will um pop but i feel like she um is similar to marina i really like music that you can listen to and it's actually sad but it doesn't sound sad if that makes sense Mm -hmm. um you go for that dancey sad music yeah i i love that shit um and i would have included robin on this but she uh so many people love robin so i i did not um, but FK, I will never forget seeing her in like 2013, 2014. She was not like that big yet. I saw her at the Metro here in Chicago and she was 
incredible. I remember I wore like all black and I had my hair like slicked parted. And um, I, I had like this big chain that I wore. Ooh. Um, yeah, it was very sexy. All of her music, it remind like her music reminds me of something that you would put on when you're like, couple of glasses of wine in maybe you're like the edibles kicking in you're like with someone that you're like super attracted to you guys are kind of like looking at each other there's like you know that feeling where it's like that like anticipation of like making out or like mm-hmm. physically touching someone else that's the kind of music that I feel like FKA Twix makes <laughs> it's very sexy but it's like weird it's like anxiety inducing sexy Yes. Anticipation sexy. My new album. Yeah. My new album is called Anxiety Inducing Sexy. That'll be my new grinder profile. <laughs> I was gonna say that should actually be like your like type and like grinder. Just yeah. anxiety inducing sex. Yeah. 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 Kind of true too. Um yeah, yeah FK Twig, she's just she's very artsy. Um she well, is I didn't even know any of her music until you sent me that music video to listen to. What so was the song called? It was called Two Weeks. It was, like, her first, like, big, like, it had broken through. I don't want to say the mainstream, because I still don't think that she is mainstream whatsoever. Um, But I do think that it was the first one that had kind of, like, broken past just, like, playing locally. Yes. Um, No, I I love her voice. I think it's very, like, soft, ethereal in a lot of ways. Um, She, uh, yeah, I remember a lot of people on Tumblr were really into her at the time. And then, maybe. yeah. And then I wish if Yahoo drops the ball the, here. One of like the energy of Tumblr. Oh yeah. Yeah. 1000%. Like, I don't think that people are ready. Like I was there. I was on the front lines. They I was wanted. there when the scripts were written, ma'am. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And like, and that whole like energy that mm-hmm. the kids are trying to bring back. I was there. So if you have was great, talk to grandma because I was yeah. here. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. Very big on like the Tumblr. It, I mean, that's around the same time period. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. 2013 was like peak Tumblr, Vine, like all that stuff. Like, and that yeah. fits right into the realm of like where FK Twigs like fits. <laughs> yeah, she definitely. That chaotic like, energy. Yeah, she has like this, Um, her voice reminds me almost of like an ethereal like um opera singer Mm -hmm. you know um and she she also is like an amazing dancer like I believe that she was she's like a trained dancer so she got her start dancing as like a backup dancer for someone and then like started singing and doing kind of this more artsy music and stuff like that but it's cool for the for the for the people who don't know for the people who might want to get into fka twigs um, I chose some songs that are some mm-hmm. of my favorites, but they're well, they're not actually all my favorites because my favorite, I don't think a lot of people would enjoy. But shout out to that song, Water Me. It's very good, but it's it's definitely different. Um, but the three songs I chose for FK Twigs, like I, like you said, two weeks. Mm-hmm. I think that's so good. The bass on that, the boom 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 oh it's so good oh another song the music video for this song is fantastic um lots of voguing um very much like a ballroom types like energy song it's called glass and patron okay <laughs> and i never heard the- of this i never listened to fk tweak so i'm actually like listening because i want to like hear her visuals also she's one of those people probably because she's a dancer her visuals are stunning stenosha they're beautiful they're gagatandra gagatandra she she just always like comes at that's another thing i like in my divas they come at things with like the sad bops and the visuals she always has really good visuals um and there was an album she released a couple years ago and it was really sad because she has had some health issues. Um, I believe she she had one of those, she had a health issue and I can't remember exactly what it was, but basically like she's not able to have children, which is one of the reasons mm. that her and R. Pattinson broke up. Because he also can't have children? Uh, no, 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 allegedly. Like, I think he wanted kids. 
alleged allegedly alleged you know allegedly i don't call it adoption know. but okay <laughs> exactly yeah. but um she like basically made this album about that um but her most recent album is not as, it's not as sad i've noticed this like uptake is that the word uptake mm-hmm. in in music mu- musings musicians who are using more like spoken moments in their songs they're like it, to open music like adele did it fk twigs just did it with this most recent album which i think it's like technically a mixtape but um it's very good and it just came out let's see it came out it's called capri songs love oh yeah yeah love that and it, it came out this year like it's literally within the past month she released it and there's a song that i think if you i think it's the like it'll connect you to something that is familiar so it's with the weekend and it's called tears in the club so i feel like he is such a big i, I mean i like she's him written too. about my life my god <laughs> tears in the club tears outside of the club tears next to the dumpster tears Sir, near the club <laughs> Another tear, another tear, crying in the club, <laughs> crying outside the club, crying in the cab, crying in the lift, crying at the 7-Eleven, crying everywhere. I think crying at the 7-Eleven was you though. I won't deny it because I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, They no, told you okay. they are not going to cook your pizza and you're just like, <laughs> that, okay. Homophobia was alive and well that night. I... <laughs> I don't know how I reacted, but I know how, what they said to me. And I know the feeling I had in my heart and my soul was It doesn't not, matter it wasn't what right your intentions me. was, but your actions offended me deeply, ma'am. <laughs> when, when he said, I said, oh, are you still doing the pizzas? And he said, no. And I went, what did I say? <laughs> what did I just, I, I think it was, I was so gassed. I don't know. I wasn't there. You were retelling this to me of like what happened. I think I remember him like saying like you can get like a frozen one and I was like oh okay so I have to cook it myself okay and also yeah, it was, like, three in the morning like who am I um but that was you know back a long time ago and now it made me so upset that just like a FK twigs I made it an album about it there you go there called you go. A slice of life Ooh, I like that yeah, thank you. It's a bun in the oven. It's a za in the oven. Well, that's Rihanna's job right now. Anyway, so for my second diva, um, she has been around since 2004. Where, okay, so Kyle's divas, you know, you said 2013, yeah. Tumblr, Vine era. Mm-hmm. Mine was more of like MTV, VH1, Cribs, Cribs TRL, you know, all that stuff. Um, her name is Sierra. And I know it's kind of funny that I'm including her on an underrated list here because she's had like a lot of number one hits. But, but, but I feel like Sierra kind of always gets forgotten about. And I don't know if it's because it's Sierra or if it's because it's pop culture. Um, but I really like Sierra. I think she is a great dancer. Um, she's a phenomenal dancer and she is such a sexy choreographer. Um, I think her music is actually pretty catchy. Um, there's a lot of songs that like are featured on the radio, like Goodies, Want to Step, Ride, uh, Like a Boy. You know, I hear them on like those like Chicago throwback radio stations. Um, and then she also just had a hit like a few years ago with Level Up. And, you know, so like, yeah. again, it, it does seem weird that I'm including her on this list here, but I feel like people listen to the music but they don't really care about Sierra, if that makes sense. They only care about her body mist. Sierra yeah. mist. Sierra mist. <laughs> Sorry, we don't have Sprite. <laughs> ah. oh, we'll pucker up. It's yeah. sour. But yeah, but I don't know. I've always liked her music. I always thought that she had good, catchy dance songs. Her music videos were always really fun to watch. Um, I don't know like okay so do you know the song body party sing it for me no <laughs> i'm done i'm retiring from that um 
I think I think we should have an episode where we just sing each other songs. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like I'll sing FK Twigs if you sing Body Party. <laughs> Tell, I will. Tell me how it goes. I'll sing. I sang Ave Maria just minutes ago. That's well, it was true. Like probably Twenty minutes ago. I am a performer, baby. <laughs> but um, so like Body Party. <laughs> Um, sorry. Anyway, I'm sorry, great. I go, I am a performer, baby. And you go, <laughs> so anyway, um, <laughs> like, um, yeah, that's great. Just like, that's great. I'm glad you're thriving in your delusion. So an yeah. underrated diva, top 40 artist, Sierra. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, back to Miss Underrated Diva, Sierra, um, body party. Um, it samples my boo from ghost town djs and she turns it onto its head into like this sexy slow burn song and she still has like that boy you should know that you love and blah 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 and i don't know i love when people like take old songs turn it on its head throw it into their own music is that the song that's like no wait no that's isn't she lovely um no uh, my boo is at night i think of you to be your baby lady. or whatever yeah yeah that's a, that's a great song wait who sings that ghost town djs and Not sierra yeah. yeah sierra sampled it for body party and she also starts off with the boy you should know that you love uh, yeah um yeah okay see i want to sing it but i don't know the words and i i know what you're talking about i feel so mm-hmm. much better now i feel alive and well Good. I'm glad. I was going to say, see, like, I think Sierra is like not that bad of an artist or who maybe could get a little bit more recognition. Who is saying that Sierra is a bad artist? Who in your life said Sierra? I remember you did. When? I remember you were just like, Sierra, she doesn't really give it to me. It was when we did our last episode um, when we did Pop Divas and you were just like, Sierra, eh, she's she's not my favorite. And I was just like, I like Sierra. She's not my and favorite. You, I know, but I'm just like, the way you said it, I was just like, why, why? Why I, don't you I, like her? No, I, I like Sierra. She's just not my favorite. That's... I feel like there's so many other musicians that come before her in my book, but it, it, has, it, it does not take away that she's talented. Mm-hmm. It does not take away that she creates good music. There's just mm-hmm. others that I like. Mm-hmm. Another thing too, though, the, the funny thing is, and the, actually the main reason why I included her on this list here is, is that even though she does have popular songs, she, her albums never really so well. Mm, okay. Yeah. Like for someone who's like a major artist, like when you look at like how many people who like bought the album, you're just like, oh. <laughs> Isn't she, she's married with a child, right? Like she's married to a sports player. She's married to Russell Wilson. Is that another Wilson sister? Wilson Phillips? It's actually the Wilson volleyball from Castaway. Well, I gotta hand it to her that um, she really volleyed that over the na- fuck. See, I don't know sports. <laughs> you, don't know you're sports. getting it. You're getting it, volley. You know, well, like I'm left out on an island by myself at this point. I I have nowhere. That's I've. There's so many moments happening in this right that now that are subtle and nuanced, and settled, you kind of have nuanced. to like take a second to understand where the joke is at. But you it's really it. <laughs> you know got to, it's very tumblr like if you don't get it right away that's okay hashtag tw um because some shit's about to spill <laughs> sure <laughs> so sierra missed. yeah so that's i don't know that's my second diva i think that she's great um people should listen to like a boy um oh <sighs> what's that last song last year think about you dance like we're making love i don't know she just has a lot of great songs in my opinion that are just really I'm like so smooth bad. slow burn r&b which is something i've always liked so you know that's just me but yeah. i love it so i always forget like the names of songs and then i'll mm-hmm. hear them and i go oh i love this song and it's like that's the yeah. song i was talking about kyle and i'm like yes i knew that like i can <laughs> never remember the names of songs and then when i hear it i go love that song really yeah it's funny how course. it's it's funny when people like retain things and when they don't retain things because I'm not really good at like lyrics at all but I know the title of the song 
but the actual lyrics i'm like what 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 was that that was me singing sierra's song that sounds like something you know what it sounds like it sounds like those toys where you go and you're like turning it back and forth and there's like the little ball inside are these dollar store toys (laughs) no (laughs) i don't know i had one as a child I don't And know. it reminded me of that. It reminded anyway. me of that. Sierra's music reminds me of Dollar Store. There, I said it. <gasps> you pushed me to that. You want a drama? You want a you drama? You got the I drama, you- sweetie. <laughs> I gave you some drama. All right, speaking of drama, who is your dramatically underrated third pop diva on this well, list you know, here? So my third diva, she's from the UK again. You know, I've got all these English... Uh, where in the UK are you from? Where am I from? My house. Um, <laughs> is that Stupid. what we were going for? Yeah. Is that what we were going for? Okay, God yeah. bless. I love when I get a joke. Um, yeah. So my last singer, she um, famously was featured on uh, the critically acclaimed film uh, Fifty Shades of Grey soundtrack. Mm. Like Ellie, Ellie Goulding. <gasps> Ellie go. Goulding. I love Ellie Goulding. Ellie Goulding. She really, she reminds me of someone who, um, so I remember watching, okay, back when I first moved to Chicago, back a million years ago, 10 years at, at this point, I was at, I was in school and I w- had a broken foot and I would go to the mess hall. Do they call it the mess hall? The cafeteria. <laughs> not mess the mess hall. hall, not a summer camp. Oh my God. I would go to the cafeteria and I couldn't carry any, like I'd have to set like, one crutch down and I was like tiny timing it over to a table so I couldn't mm-hmm. get all the food I wanted so I lost all this weight it was terrible but I would sit there and they'd always play like the top 10 songs and one of them it'd be like LMFAO um Nicki Minaj and one of them was uh Ellie Golding was always playing and she's just like her music is always just really good she was very big you know she had the shaved uh, all the girls had the Ellie Golding haircut where it was like buzzed on the one side, very like, didn't she date Skrillex? Yeah, I mean, that's definitely Cassie, but Ellie Goulding did it too. <laughs> well, if you wanted to talk about an underrated diva, you could have talked about Cassie, but you didn't. You talked about Sierra. <laughs> <laughs> so there you dumb bitch. <laughs> I just laughed so hard I got lightheaded. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> one drama. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> Fuck you and your Kathy. So, <laughs> no. Um, what is it like? Lights, like yes. All of her songs are really good. Like I, so lights. I think is like the biggest, like probably hit that mm-hmm. has come out of Ellie Golding. My favorite's like. I mean, I'm a sucker for the song. Anything can happen. Yes. Like it takes me to a moment. It. Ge- I text you earlier. It gave me some goosebumps. Because you know what? Anything can happen. Like, I remember, like, having that on my iPod Touch and walking, because I didn't have an iPhone yet, and walking out of my class and thinking to myself, I wasn't medicated, and thinking to myself, I'm quitting school, I'm going out, and I'm going to meet someone tonight. And then I press play, and then, like, anything could happen, anything. And I'm, like, walking down, like, the streets of Chicago, and I'm, like, Like uh, like I'm a Forever 21 soundtrack or something. Right. Um, yeah, no, she's great. Lots of fun songs. I, I did see What's her What's that song with her and Calvin Harris? Didn't they date? They did date for a while. And then what was that song that they did together? That was a really good song. Oh, God. What was that song? I don't know. Um, uh, was it How Deep Is Your Love? How deep is your love? Like did she sing that? Because, uh, I don't know. I am- now I have to. Now I'm wondering. I'm looking it up. Oh no, it's I outside. Got it outside. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, she has like all these fun pop hits, and it always like gets you like pumped. Like I just want to like jump around and pretend I'm on the show Skins. For those who don't know and only watch Euphoria, Skins was a show. 
that came out before Euphoria. Um, mm-hmm. And every time I would go out, I would be there dancing with my my drink, and I'd be like, "Oh my god, it's like we're just on Skins." And all my friends would be like, "No," because they were like on crack, like. <laughs> we're not on that drug you have one drink in your hand and you're dancing at a club that's not the same kyle and i was like okay um you were more degrassi like you weren't skins you were degrassi yeah very canadian i mean where i grew up was only like an hour away from canada so like work um i mean i love the song burn Mm -hmm. (gasps) yeah burn burn oh Mm -hmm. do you remember killing of a sacred deer yeah <gasps> yes and that curl is like doing the like monotone cover burn 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 gonna let it burn burn <laughs> i forgot about that <gasps> yeah oh my god i kind of so forgot great. about that so you know like earlier when i said oh um uh like oh i don't know what she's like doing nowadays um i, w- I was talking about miss ellie um the last mm. time i'd seen her um she had a different face which is like not you know hey everyone changes their face sometimes um but it, she was unrecognizable um and <laughs> i was shocked baby i mean method it actress was like, it was like 2015 i was dating um this guy and he took me to see you know who this is that was 2015 wasn't it 2015 2016 damn yeah. that was a long time ago yeah yeah i don't i don't hang on to them long um <laughs> or rather they don't hang on to me long um but we went and we saw her and bb rexa and years and years opened for her and she gets on stage and everyone's like Woo! and then this face comes up on the screen and i was like oh who's that <laughs> it was her it was she, her. Yeah, she got like a nose job and like filler in her cheeks and lips and stuff. And it just, she just looked different. She just looked well, different. Well, those are like the distinguishing parts of her. It's her nose and her cheeks yes. and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I'm like, I, I, I was like, that's a new nose. And she's very pretty. She was always pretty. Um, you need but- to, you need to see um, Ellie Goulding's cover of a Big Yellow Taxi that she did for Joni Mitchell at the Kennedy Center Honors. It's so. Well, what year was that? Was that I think this year I think this year it was so okay. good and like when I thought about it I was just like oh my god Ellie Goulding has like the perfect voice to cover Joni Mitchell like it was very just pretty really, voice. very pretty I, I that was a good choice I like Ellie Goulding a lot yeah no she's great I I um wait big yellow taxi you said mm-hmm. okay I'm don't looking that up but you don't know what you got till it's gone Oh, this was literally like a month ago. Yeah. Oh, okay. Good for her. I know. Oh man, Joni Mitchell looks old. Um, is this because she's not getting the Spotify deal? (laughs) (laughs) Um, she's old. She's old. Um, yeah. I I think that, and I also think about like the time that I worked at Forever Twenty One for a hot second, and her song "Starry Eyed" would always come on. Mm-hmm. And I, I'd be like putting away like racks of cheap clothing, and I'd be like, oh, 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 starry eyed, oh, 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 oh. and I'd be like, I know. Really? now she's, she's like, she's Ellie fun. Goulding is good, but she's like getting delegated to like grocery store music, which we don't want for her. We want her to be a radio diva. So you know what? stream Ellie Goulding. If 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 I could, I would be a grocery store diva because you know what. <laughs> I, my goal, my goal is to be every mom's favorite drag queen. That is true. And see, that would fit right you perfectly pause. in the, you your, pause. <laughs> you pause there, you pause. You, I, I'm, okay, hyperventilating. <laughs> okay. <like>, okay. <laughs> Let me take a drink of water. Okay. Please do. Because I'm going to move on to my third choice here. So enough about grocery store divas here and the fact that, I mean, I think you would definitely fit in with like that aesthetic. I love a grocery store. I I, Grocery store divas. Our next podcast, grocery store. Grocery store divas. (gasps) That's our, that's going to be our third diva ranking. Yes, for sure. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, my last one is someone who has been around for quite some time here, probably around like 2010 is when she started getting big. Um, and she's such a great artist and she's very widely overlooked. It's Janelle Monet. Mm-hmm. Um, she, I don't know, she has just made such great music, such great concept albums over the years. Um, she, her albums all have a theme of like her being an android and coming to life and exploring the world that she lives in. And it went from Arc Android to Queen, I think it was the second album, and then Dirty Computer. And I don't know, she's just so good. And like I we remember were talking earlier about how she always has like we divas that always have like a theme to their album mm-hmm. and she great visuals. Great, great visuals. Mm-hmm. Dirty Computer. Wow. Yeah, she has like a 45 minute like film that goes with Dirty Computer. It doesn't have like all the songs to it here, but like all I remember is like watching her in like those frilly pink pantsuits in the desert singing pink mm-hmm. and the ode, greatest ode to vaginas ever. And just them doing those like cute little like robotic dances in the desert. It was so good. I love Janelle Monet. I... I remember hating Casey Musgraves for a while because she won album of the year for golden hour, which I'll retract my statement. Casey Musgraves yeah. is a fabulous lady. You can uh, say, you can say what you want. I mean, I mean, yeah. I, yeah, I mean, I love Casey Musgraves, um, but dirty computer. I know it was such a the good album, album was really good. Yeah. I mean, granted, I will say Janelle Monet has had success as an actor more so than okay. I feel like she has as a singer. Um, she's in Moonlight. She's in Hidden Figure. She was in Antebellum. She was in Harriet. Did you she's... see Annabelle? An, 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 oh my God. Antebellum. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having an, an, an aneurysm. Yeah. Um, did, you, did you see that? No, because um, it looked really uncomfortable <laughs> in a lot of ways. Like that was the type of horror. I'm just like, I don't know if I can handle oh that. Gosh, sometimes you got to be uncomfortable. I know, things. but she is going to be in that new um, Jordan Peele horror movie with Steven Yoon and um, someone else called Nope. I don't. So Jordan it, Peele. Wait, that's what it's called? It's called Nope? Yeah, it's called Nope. So Jordan I Peele. Thought you, is I, th- made... I thought you were like, it's called Nope. And then you were oh. like, <laughs> okay, sorry. I was. <laughs> Daniel Kaluuya is the star in it. Kiki Palmer is in it. Um, Steven Yoon is it and I'm oh maybe she's not in it maybe she's not in it never mind well that was my completely separate plug for (laughs) Jordan Peele it's like what are you I mean I remember her performing at the Oscars um the year that they were all dressed up as like different things that Knives Out 2 sorry Knives Out 2 that's where she's in oh she's in Knives Out 2 Mm-hmm. Yeah, that yeah. other Jordan Peele movie, Nice Out too. <laughs> Shut up. Anyway, okay. <laughs> anyway, what were you saying? Knives are out here. So yeah. I dress like a, a, a French baguette. <laughs> the mime. Yeah. The mime at the grocery store that is everyone's favorite mom's drag queen daughter thing. Every every mom. The name on every mother's lips is gonna be Adelweiss. <laughs> um, no, but um, with Janelle, you, I feel like I can't really recommend three different songs that you could listen to. I feel like you actually have to just go and listen to each album in order because it does have an overlapping work. story. Yeah, you got to work for your pop diva I mean, Dirty Computer, like I could give you every single song off of that album. Screwed pink make uh make me feel um i got that juice i like that like all those songs so great just listen to that album alone here we're gonna uh, sorry we songs by the way like totally controversial here but we're going to be making a spotify playlist for those who want to listen to these pop divas here what if i doesn't pay my bills doesn't pay joni mitchell's apparently either (laughs) joni mitchell Kennedy Honors, no, no longer on Spotify. No, no. Is she? Did she pull it? Did she pull the page? I think so. I think she ripped out the cords. 
I think she ripped out the life support. <laughs> I'm looking it up right now. Nope, she's still on Spotify. I still can <gasps> really. I can still wow. listen to the case for you. I can still listen to um you know, chalk mark and a rainstorm. Oh, interesting. So, interesting. Joni Mitchell. Hypocrite. <laughs> no, she probably has to like go through all the, you know, things. You know what I mean? Like you can't just like be like, I'm going to do this. Like you have to like talk to your manager, talk to like producers, all the other stuff. Well then why make the announcement if you're not gonna do it, girl? Just well, maybe she wants to, but maybe she can't. Now maybe. you're coming for Joni Mitchell. I know. I don't know why. <laughs> Like, what is happening? What is happening on the show? You're coming for Joni Mitchell. You're coming for Jordan Peele. You're coming for... <laughs> hey, these are our hot takes, and I have a lot of them. <laughs> always. Yeah, always. But anyway, those are our three under... Well, six total underrated divas here that we feel like deserved a little bit more appreciation and love here. Um, I wish we could include their actual music in the show, but unfortunately we are reduced to singing it. Um, so you have that to listen. Yeah, I was going to say, so you're welcome in advance here. Um, but we are going to create a playlist for you guys to listen to in case you ever want to listen to these pop divas here um kyle where can people find us outside of the spotify playlist well if we're not on the spotify you can also find us on apple podcast and soundcloud and you can also follow us on facebook and instagram at fear the queer podcast um i see you facebook i see you people following i see you. a lot of people are following us on facebook I, you notice that too Mm-hmm. Why? 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 I don't, I, you know, what? don't question when God gives you an answer. Don't question, just do it. So. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so we see you Facebook. And you know what? They probably see us too because government things. Yeah. Um, Josh, people wanted to contact us. Like if they want to say like, hey, we hate your opinions or like, hey, you guys should, um, here's money to create your own HBO Max show. Where should they contact us? You should definitely slide into our DMs, especially on Instagram. Um, I think you can actually slide into our DMs on Facebook, but I don't think anyone has ever done it yet. Um, I think, I don't know. We're getting a lot of well, like I, I, attention I on there. Well, I think like Messenger and Instagram are like connected because they're owned by what was that company that they renamed by meta thank you i couldn't remember i couldn't i was like sponsored by squarespace yeah. <laughs> sponsored by betterhelp.com could you imagine um no i think you can message us there just don't email us because i actually it's funny i actually tried to log into the fear the queer podcast email the other day uh-huh. and i forgot yeah. our password and i asked you what the password was mm-hmm. and you're like i don't know so but you got in right I think I did. I can't remember. I, I mean, it was still. I gave, I, I gave you like a list of like four answers and you yeah. laughed at them and then only one of them works. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah. Um, yes. But as always, I'm Josh. And I'm Kyle. And we're Fear the Queer. Fear. Bye. Au revoir. That's how you say goodbye in French, right? Mm-hmm. Au revoir. Good job, Madeline. <laughs> Au revoir. Madeline. Do you say Madeline? Madeline, isn't that her name? It's Madeline. (laughs) Madeline. (laughs) Oh my God. Whatever.